Hi guys, and welcome to today's video. My name is Stephanie, and we are finally, we are finally having the wedding video where we talk about the wedding. Um, so, in case you didn't know, me and Kyle, my husband, just recently got married at Walt Disney World. We had a Disney fairy tale wedding, and in my last video, I had mentioned that there were definitely some hiccups during the wedding, um, and kind of some interesting stuff that happened, and I wanted to just go over the whole process of Disney fairy tale weddings and you know what happened that day and just kind of my output on the whole thing um, and it probably sounds like I am congested and that's because I am so sorry about that but still I wanted to make this video and I also wore my my message shirt it says established mar March 16th 2022 which I figured now would be a good time to wear the shirt because I really have not I don't really have much use for it after this, so <laughs> it's like a good chance for me to have an excuse to wear it. So, um, yes, me and Kyle got married at Disney's Polynesian Resort um, at Luau Point, which is an outdoor location. And then we had our, um, I guess you would call it like rehearsal dinner, but it was actually a dessert party, and that was at Epcot. As far as the Disney wedding team goes, they have you plan your wedding 10 months in advance. Um, or at least start the process of planning. So that's what we did. We literally just emailed the wedding team. We were like, hey, we're interested in having a wedding with you guys. Um, you know, what's, you know, what's the lowdown? Like, how do we go about doing that? And so they gave us this little, little brochure, uh, over different locations that you can choose from and like the minimum, maximum amount of people you can have in those ceremony places. Um, and just kind of like easy stuff like that. And so you don't really do much for the first couple of months. You really just pick like where you want to get married. Um, and that's kind of it. So that's what we did. And then waited a few months. And then throughout the whole entire, you know, wedding process and just kind of figuring things out, it was very, very hard to communicate with the Disney fairy tale wedding team. It was hard to know who we needed to contact. It was all email based. A lot of times it was through different people that you were contacting. So it's not even like I had one established person that I was able to contact. Um, I did get one, I guess like my wedding consultant or whatever. Um, that was later, you know, kind of in the planning process. I would say probably like, like four months or five months before the wedding. Um, but I don't know if I was just unlucky, but the person that I talked to would take like three to four weeks to answer emails, um, and it was it just felt like they did not care at all, if I'm being completely honest. So that was kind of a bummer through the whole planning process. It was hard to get information, um, and I really wish they would have told... I wish they would have told me specifically what some of my options were. So, for instance, I mean going over like photography and videography and stuff, they didn't really go over what package options there were and they didn't really tell me like what videos you can have and what the videos end up looking like. And even with like the music that they have, um, you can have a violinist, guitarist, and they didn't have like examples of those things. They didn't like send you a file of like what those things sounded like. And now after having the wedding, I kind of realized, oh, I wish I would have been able to hear what those things sounded like because that might have changed what I had chosen. Now I did go online and I did, you know, watch people's videos and stuff like that of their weddings and of the planning process and that kind of stuff and try to get information there. But it's hard when it's not the actual person planning the wedding because they're the ones that should have the most like up-to-date information. So that was kind of a little bit frustrating, I guess. Um, but whatever, that part doesn't matter as much. Um, so we started, you know, making a little bit more decisions once it got closer to the wedding, but there was still a lot of stuff that wasn't, you know, like finalized, I guess. You know, I knew where we were getting married and I knew the dessert party and stuff, but we didn't have a menu picked out for the dessert party. They hadn't asked us for like a final guest count. They haven't asked us to finalize any music preferences that we want, anything like that. And we were just trying to get in contact with them. We were like, hey, who do we go to about this? I feel like we need to decide this. Like, what do we do? And so, finally, about a month and a half before the wedding, my wedding consultant contacted 
us. And she was like, hey, we, you know, have a lot of decisions that we need to make, so are you available either today at 4 o'clock, tomorrow at 3 o'clock, or the following day at 3 o'clock? And it turns out I was actually going to Disneyland the very next day, so I wasn't going to be able to go, like, like call on the next two days. So I had to call, like, literally that day, which was 30 minutes from the time I got the email. And that wasn't the best timing because I was in the car with my mom picking up my nephew from school. So we were planning the majority of the wedding in like 15 to 30 minutes on, you know, in like a school parking lot <laughs> picking up my nephew from school. So that was very interesting and kind of hectic because we were trying to go back and look at uh, pamphlets that they have sent us of menu items on things that you know, we could pick from and we couldn't pick from and what was available and all that kind of stuff. And so that was very flustering, I guess, but luckily I had looked at that kind of stuff and so I had known, you know, around about the things that I wanted to choose. Um, it was just very abrupt, so that was very tough decision making <laughs> for those like 15 minutes. So we ended up doing that, like I said, it was very stressful. And during this whole time, like, even the months prior to this, we had tried to get in contact with them and, like, get answers and stuff, and they really just weren't getting back to us, or kind of, they would do a good job at, like, kind of avoiding questions, or only answering, like, two out of the eight questions that you have, and stuff like that. And so, it was just, it was really difficult, you know, as far as that goes. But, like I said, is what it is. I'm not going to complain about that stuff too much. It just, a lot of people are having this issue as well. I've gone on, you know, Disney's Facebook groups for the fairy tale wedding site and they're all having the same issue as well. So I know that it's a, a common occurrence. Um, then once we got to Disney, um, you know, we, we still hadn't had a final guest count or anything. Like they hadn't gotten any of this information or asked for it or anything. And so, um, it was the rehearsal, you know, the rehearsal wedding day. And so, they asked us to meet at the Polynesian, where we, we were getting married, at 5 o'clock p.m. And then we were going to go over, you know, kind of like how the wedding would go. Um, so we were there at 5 o'clock, and then I got a text from my wedding um, consultant lady. And she was like, hey... I'm not going to be able to make it there today. I have an assistant coming to help you guys out. She's great. Um, she's just running late, and so she's going to be there in a little bit. And so, like, it was already 5 o'clock at this point. So we were like, okay, like, whatever, I guess that's fine. Um, but, like, no, there was no reason why, like, the, the lady that was supposed to be my wedding consultant lady never came. I actually never got to meet her, ever. She wasn't even at the wedding, so that was, like, a little bit weird. So the lady ended up coming up, it was, she was probably like, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes late. And so she ended up coming, um, although right before she came, there was a girl that came, and I'm going to say her name because this girl was very, very kind and nice, and she did a great job. That girl's name is Toby Jo, so if you're watching this, you did a very fantastic job, and I'm very thankful for you relieving some of the stress that day of answering our questions and everything, so thank you. Um, so she came and she said she was new to the, you know, wedding team and, you know, she's still kind of learning the ins and outs, but she can definitely help us answer our questions, that kind of stuff. So she was the, the one that took us over to the Luau Point area at the Polynesian. Um, she was like, okay, so this is where you guys are going to stand when you're getting married. This is where, you know, the groomsmen are going to stand and the party will be here. Stephanie, you'll walk with your dad, but you'll hide over here so Kyle doesn't see you, like blah, 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 blah. So she went over all that kind of stuff, and then the lady that was, I guess, the assistant to my wedding consultant, she ended up coming. I'm not going to say her name because I'm not the happiest with her, and I don't want to throw under, uh, throw her under the bus. Um, so that lady ended up coming, and, you know, she was like, hey, you know, sorry I'm late, but I'm here now, and we're going to, you know, make this day great. And so, um, you know, she was talking to us as well and answering some questions, stuff like that. And so we had told her some things that we wanted to change just a little bit and the way that they had the chair situated, it was super, super close to where me and Kyle were physically like getting married. And so we had asked if we could just back those up like, I don't know, like 10 feet or so. Um, just because, like I said, it was like claustrophobic, super, super close. And so they were like, yeah, no problem. We'll make a note for that. We'll have those 
chairs, you know, back, not a problem. Um, and then we, what else? Then, you know, we kind of did normal stuff. Everything seemed to be running smoothly. That was fine. And then um, they were walking us to the area that we were going to do our dances. So, you know, first dance and then father-daughter dance, mother and son dance. And <clears throat> she, you know, looked at the paper and she was like, oh, you know, I don't have that here that you're going to be, you know, dancing or anything. And... I had not only told my wedding consultant that we were going to be doing our first dances there and stuff, but I also, she had, she had me send a physical, like, links to all of the music that I wanted. We imported them, we, you know, put them on the cloud that they gave us and then sent that directly to them. And they even finalized and said that they got it and they looked great and, you know, they were going to sound good. And so I had done all of that, and she didn't even have it written down that we were even doing the dances. So I was like, mm, okay, that's kind of annoying, but whatever. <clears throat> and so she wrote in with a highlighter our songs that we were going to dance to. And so my dad looked at her, and he was like, hey, I just want to make sure, like, this is very important to us. You know, specifically, I, you know, the first dance is very important, but, you know, I'm very close with my whole entire family, and so the father-daughter dance is very special to me. Mother and son dance, very important as well, and we wanted to make sure that those are going to be able to be played on our wedding day. Like, super important. So she's like, yeah, no problem. You know, I have it written down here. It is, it's going to happen. We were like, okay. And my dad even questioned it again, and I pulled him away, and I was like, dad, she said she has it. Like, let's not stress about this. No big deal. And so I shouldn't, I shouldn't have questioned him asking again, but whatever. And so, you know, all that happened, everything was very rushed. I want to say this whole thing happened in like, probably like 25 minutes. Um, <clears throat> but they probably had other things to do and other places to go. And so, you know, the lady that was, you know, kind of taking charge and stuff, she came to me and she said, you know, I might not be able to be at your wedding tomorrow. I'm definitely going to try, but I do have other weddings. So, you know, if not, then I'll give this information to somebody who is going to be at your wedding. So that way they know, you know, everything that they need to do, like about what we talked about. And, you know, they can just get everything finalized and organized for you. I was like, okay. Um, which I thought was really strange. I think that the person that is at your rehearsal, you know, your wedding rehearsal, I think that that person should be at your wedding just because things that you go over and little details and stuff that you want changed, they're the person that would remember as opposed to somebody else who wasn't even there. But that's my personal opinion. I am not a wedding planner, so I, you know, who knows? I'm probably wrong. It is the night before the wedding. So a storm is a brewin and we have a wedding outside and it says it's going to rain until like three or four o'clock tomorrow and it's like 100% chance and our wedding's at 2.30 <clears throat> so I was kind of freaking out but at the same time I was like well you know what we'll just figure it out as it goes if they need to move us inside we'll figure out someplace to get married um and so went to sleep woke up and then we started getting ready all right so the boys uh, Kyle and his groomsmen were supposed to go down for the photos um, at one o'clock and they were supposed to meet at the lobby. Then I, me and my bridesmaid and stuff, were supposed to go down at 1.30 once Kyle and his groomsmen and stuff were gone so that way we don't see each other. And then, um, you know, Kyle was supposed to go down and take photos with his family and groomsmen and that kind of stuff. So that was happening at one o'clock. Um, and then we were supposed to be getting a call about 1.30, just letting us know, like, hey, you're good to go down now. Kyle's gone, so, you know, you can walk. <clears throat> so it was 1.30, and we didn't get that call. And so it was, like, 1.35 at this point, and he was like, hey, are you in the same room as Stephanie? She was like, yes. He was like, well, don't be. And she was like, okay so she like walks outside of the hotel room and he's telling her on the phone he's like so you know Kyle and us came down at one o'clock and there was no photographer to be seen so we had just been waiting here waiting here 
and then finally the wedding coordinator showed up and this actually did end up being the same lady from the previous day <coughs> which is good I guess um, so you know she was down there but the wedding photographer he was not there and so mom was like are you serious like we have a wedding in you know 45 minutes or so and we don't even have a photographer that's just great so I guess the wedding consultant had told my dad she was like oh you know he's here somewhere he's just lost he's trying to find his way to the lobby um, so he'll be here in just a moment and my dad was not having any of that he was just not believing that because you know it doesn't take somebody 15 minutes to even get from one end of the Polynesian to the other end of the Polynesian so like he knew that was not the case and so <clears throat> Like, they, I guess, just were sitting there waiting for the photographer to come up. And, you know, obviously we're not getting our pictures taken. So, then my mom comes in, and I can tell that she's, like, a little bit stressed out. So, I was like, Mom, what's wrong? She was like, well... And then she told me, and I was like, okay, you know, we're going to get this figured out. I am a big photography person. I not only own two nice cameras, I do photography just as a little hobby, just for fun. Um, and, you know, it's, I, I photo photographed a couple weddings as well, so I do know, you know, how to do that. So this is what's happening right now. What time is it? It, it is 143. 143. <laughs> so Kyle and the groomsman and his family were supposed to take pictures of the Polynesian in the lobby, um, at one, right? Do you want me yeah, to hold it for at you? one. If for you, you want to. Okay. At one o'clock. <laughs> Come over um, here. But the photographer hasn't shown up. Great! So, it is now 1.43. We were supposed to start taking photos. Like, they were supposed to be done. We were supposed to start taking photos at 11.30. No, 1.30, right? Mm -hmm. so from and it's 1.43, and Kyle and the group still hasn't taken photos yet. And our wedding is supposed to be at 2.30. So that's really exciting. <laughs> Um, luckily I brought both of my Canon cameras, and I have this Canon G7X. So you're, you're stacked. So I'm stacked, and I fully charge them. So if this ever happens to you, if you have a nice camera, make sure to charge it before the wedding. Stay tuned for what's, to what's next. What's going to happen what's next? <laughs> I didn't want to go down and take photos of the guys in my wedding dress, um, just because I felt like that wasn't really professional. <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't know, maybe I should have. But... My bride, one of my bridesmaids, she's good with the camera and everything, and so I was like, hey, Patty, can you just take my camera, go down, and take some photos of the guys? She's like, yes, I'll go do that. <clears throat> and so she did that for a little bit, but we were still, like, crunched on time. Like, we were getting closer to the wedding. It's, like, 1.45 at this point, and, you know, so she takes photos of the guys super quick. Um, but... In the meantime, while they're trying to figure out what happened to the photographer, then um, they got a photo pass, you know, cast member to come over and then he started taking photos of the guys, which is very nice. Like, I am very thankful for this guy. It was very nice of him to be able to come over and do that. Granted, it wasn't necessarily what we were paying for because we were paying for a Disney wedding photographer, but at least someone's taking some photos, right? Um, so, you know, they're still trying to figure out what happened to the photographer and, like, what's going on and everything like that. I personally think that they just didn't book anybody. I think they forgot, and I think it slipped under, you know, the radar. But, you know, we will never know what actually happened. Um, so, then it gets to be, I don't know, it's probably close to 2 o'clock at this point. And so, a then someone shows up and he's going to take our photos. He is a professional Disney photographer, you know, guy. And he is here to take our photos. And, you know, he was not the person that was supposed to be taking our photos, I guess. He was called in. Apparently there was like a massive group text between all the photographers and they were trying to figure out somebody that could come on such short notice to take photos for the wedding. So, I'm very thankful he came because if not, then we wouldn't have had a photographer at all. But, you know, we did pay for it. That was in the planning process. It was in the, you know, papers that we signed for everything. Like, it was definitely set in stone that we were supposed to have one. So, 
you know, he ends up coming, it's like 2 o'clock, and so he doesn't have time to take photos of any of the guys, or Kyle and his parents, or anything like that, um, and so he, you know, grabs me, my bridesmaids, he takes some photos of us, takes some quick photos of me and my family, and then we literally, like, book it to the, where we're getting married, to Luau Point. And, um, so that was, you know, I'm thankful that he came and that we had somebody, but it was super rushed and we definitely didn't get the photos that we were supposed to get. So that was extremely frustrating because now I'll never have, you know, the actual professional photos that we were supposed to have. Um, and I, like I said, I'm a big photo person. I like having photos. I'm a big memory person. I love making memories and doing videos and, you know, just like being with family and so that is something that like really irritates me but you know like I said you can only do so much. Then it's the wedding and I'm kind of hidden back with the girls you know the violinist playing Kyle's walking his mom down and they're doing all like the early stuff before I walk down and so the music starts playing the girls start walking and I chose to have a violinist play um if you are planning to have a Disney fairy tale wedding, definitely listen. I'll post my wedding video. Definitely listen to how the violinist sounded. Just listen to it and see what you think. But yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of the violinist. Probably would have chose guitarist, but oh well, it's what it is. It doesn't really matter. And so they started walking down. Um, and then, you know, me and my dad start walking down. That's all good and everything. The photographer is there, so he's taking photos. That's very great. <laughs> um, and so that all goes well. <clears throat> then I start walking up and I notice that the chairs are closer than they were on the, at the rehearsal. You know, I didn't say anything about that. Obviously, I'm in the middle of having a wedding. It, like, was the last thing on my mind. And so it felt so claustrophobic up there. It felt like I was being breathed on by the front row. Granted, it was Kyle's parents and my parents, but still, it was like, it was so close. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, it's what it is. Then we did the wedding thing. My Uncle Nick was the one that officiated the wedding, and he did a great job. He's so awesome. Very thankful that we had him do that. And, you know, our bridal parties were amazing. And I'm just thankful my family was there. Kyle's family was there. It was great. And so then the wedding happened, we got married, then we, you know, I walked out with uh, Kyle at the end, everybody cheers, like, yada yada yada. I now pronounce you officially husband and wife, and you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Byerly. And then after we, you know, like tied the knot, we were supposed to go to this little like hallway area. And then um, they were supposed to have bubbles for all the guests. And then the guests were supposed to like blow the bubbles and then we were supposed to walk down. We had talked about that the day before and they had told us like where to go for that and everything. And so we were walking towards to do that and then they were filing all the guests up, you know, along the pathways to get the bubbles and stuff. And then they realized that they didn't have the bubbles. And so <clears throat> they had us just like walk while the guests were cheering down a hallway. And that was very awkward. <laughs> yeah, they missed the ball on that one. But then, so then we went to go do the, you know, father-daughter dance and first dance and mother-son dance. So we go down to do that. And then me and Kyle, um... You know, the music starts playing, me and Kyle start dancing, we dance, he takes photos of us while we're doing that, that's all great, you know, awesome, that's great. And then, um, we do the father's daughter dance. So, we get to the father-daughter dance, and, like, me and my dad are holding, holding hands, waiting for the music to play, um, and then, mm, me and my dad are dancing to I Will by Dean Martin, and she wrote that down yesterday. Music starts playing, it's a Dean Martin song, but I do not even know what Dean Martin song they're playing. And so, we like we started dancing and I questioned to my dad, I was like, Dad, is this the right song? And he's like, I, I don't, 
I'm, I don't know. <clears throat> this doesn't sound right. And so then we were, we like looked around and we were like, hey, this is like not the right music. And they were like, oh, sorry. And so like my mom runs over there and they're like, oh, I don't know what, where the files are. Like we don't, I don't know where they went. Um, and so then my mom was like, well, what can we do? And they were like, well, I don't know. Is there anything we, you know, like can do? And then she was like, I don't know. Can we just like look it up on YouTube or something? So they literally looked it up on YouTube, which I don't know why they didn't do that to begin with, like whatever. Um, looked it up in YouTube, but then they started playing it. We started dancing. That was great. You know, thank goodness for YouTube and thank you mom for <laughs> deciding to do that. The whole time we were taking photos, like from the time we started dancing to the end of like the family photos, that whole thing we did so quick, maybe 15 minutes or so. But anyway, it was it was getting hot and everybody started to get hot like during the wedding. And my sister was up there with us and you know, they have a little water station. They said they were gonna provide water, you know, throughout the wedding and stuff like that. So they had that. Um, only problem is they never refilled it. So after, like, before I even walked down the aisle, the water station was empty, or almost empty, I should say. And by the time that the wedding was over and we had done dancing, the water was completely empty and they never refilled it, never touched it once or anything. And so <clears throat> my sister was starting to get a little bit hot and then I look over, like we're in the middle of taking photos. Her face is pale, her lips are pale, and it like, it's, you know, I know something's gonna happen. She's like, I don't feel good, I'm gonna pass out. And so she says that her husband's like right behind her. My sister has her flowers like this and just like falls back. And he just, he catches her, luckily, catches her, walks her over to this little bench and then like we start like fanning her and then I think my brother ran to like Captain Cook's cause that was the closest place to get water. <clears throat> so he ran over there, got her water, gave that to her and then the Disney wedding consultant lady, you know, came to us and she was like, do we need to get like, um, you know, a vehicle to come over and like bring her inside or anything? And I'm like, you know, I'm not really sure. My brother's getting water right now. And they were like, oh, and then like, I don't know if they didn't realize they didn't have water or like what was going through their brain, but like that is something they should probably address at weddings. It's like, if it's outside, let's have water. Actually, let's just have water in general. Water is probably a good thing to have you know, with big groups of people. But anyway, so that happened. And then, you know, she he, she got water and then she started feeling better. And um, I think Kristen, my bridesmaid, she ran over to the water station and she was trying to get like the last bit of water. She was like, we're waiting for ice to melt to get the water. <clears throat> so she was trying to do that as well. But either way, my sister finally got water and she started, you know, getting her energy level back. Then we started taking photos again. She felt very bad that she did that. Like, it is not her fault. I'm not mad at her at all. Like, I just, I felt so bad. Um, but she was okay. And I do want to point out, one of the reasons that she did pass out is because she was newly pregnant. So, newly pregnant and dehydrated probably doesn't go hand in hand. So, you know, that is another reason why it's not just because it was so hot. Um, but that definitely is a factor. Um, so yeah, that happened. My sister was okay. She's, you know, feeling good and everything. Um, <clears throat> then we finish up pictures quickly because like I said, the storm still looks like it's going to come in. And then, um, he has me and Kyle like as quick as we can just go take a few photos at some other locations like nearby. So he took some photos down near the beach, down near the dock, and then in front of the totem pole guy that used to be outside in front of the luau, but I think they've demolished that whole, they've actually demolished, like the area that we got married is completely demolished now. Um, so you obviously you can't get married there because they're putting a new resort or DVC thing or whatever. So anyway, um, that happened and then the photographer, he said, he was like, hey, you know, uh, I'm, you know, thankful I was able to get here quickly and, you know, take all these photos. I'm actually going to be the one that's a reception later on today for the dessert party. So I will see you guys later. Um, I have some work to go get done and then I'll, I'll see y'all, you know, once we meet up later. We had a little bit of downtime, so we went to go eat. And then me and Kyle got some Dole Whips 
and we ate those with my parents and hung out in the lobby for a little bit. Then it was time to go to Epcot. So then um, we, me and Kyle actually took the monorail, took the monorail, went to Epcot, and then um, there were still storms in the area, so we were supposed to have an outside dessert party, um, but they had notified us ahead of time. They were like, hey, we're just going to move the, um, the dessert party indoors, and then we'll go, we'll walk um, out towards, you know, World Showcase and everything for the fireworks, and then we'll walk back and have the desserts, you know, in case it rains or something. That was fine with me. I preferred being inside anyway because it was AC, so that is always better than the humid of humidity of Florida. I'm very thankful for that happening. Um, it ended up being in the Living Seas, which was so cool to see. Um, you actually went behind kind of in between where the Living Seas sign is and then where the Coral Reef restaurant, it's like right near where you enter the Coral Reef restaurant to like the left. So we went inside there and then we went up these elevators and then down this hallway and then there's this huge vintage sign, not vintage, but like from the late 80s. Anyway, that says the Living Seas, it is so cool. And then, you know, we got to have dinner in there and do the desserts. We chose to not only have desserts, but we chose to have a pasta station as well, just because we weren't technically doing like a lunch, so we wanted to have like actual food at the wedding besides just desserts. So before the fireworks, um, we kind of just only had time to just chill in there. We didn't really have time to eat or anything, and so we just got to look around. You could see the tanks that you can see from the inside of the Living Seas, so that was awesome to see the fish all swim around. Um, and it works out perfectly because we love animals and it was like it was just beautiful in there it, I couldn't have asked for a better dessert party honestly if it was up to you know that point on I would give the wedding like a 10 out of 10 because that was perfect um, and the cake was amazing it looked beautiful it tasted great um, so yeah we got got to the dessert party area um, and then we, you know, we looked around for a little bit, sat down for a minute, and then they had us get up, and then we walked over to World Showcase. We walked over to World Showcase, that's where we met up with the photographer again. We um, got the, it was behind, um, behind the Rose and Crown restaurant at the UK Pavilion. It was like kind of over there. So that's where we viewed the fireworks. It's a very good viewing spot and everything. So we did that and we met up with the photographer. He took our photos while we were watching the fireworks and everything like that. And then we, once the fireworks were done, we all walked back to, you know, the Living Seas again. And then we started eating. The pasta station was amazing. If you like pasta, then I would definitely recommend having that at your wedding. Um, they had Alfredo and marinara available. I got both because I wanted to try literally everything because we paid for it, so I might as well try it. Um, so both of them were amazing. They had meatballs as well. Those were also good. Um, and then they kind of, I guess, I don't know if like the the food and beverage team had like heard about what had happened earlier with the whole like photography and all the mishaps that had happened, but they gave everybody there free champagne like unlimited you could have whatever you wanted and we had only paid for one bottle and that was for like toasting glasses so that was very nice of the food and beverage team like I said they were top-notch and if it was up to them like they did an amazing job I wish I could have like just worked with their team the whole entire time because they were so awesome um, and then we had the desserts and um, all the desserts were amazing I literally liked every single one we had ended up uh, picking one of the preset preset dessert menus that they gave uh, They give you as like options and we tweaked a couple of the things that were on there I think it was called Donald's screen show dessert menu. So all of them were amazing and then what else? Oh, then we cut the cake and we tasted the cake. The cake was amazing and we had never gotten to They never gave us an option to like taste the cakes or anything which I wish they would have and I wish they would have, even if it was just like sending us samples, we ended up choosing a three-tier cake. It was, you know, vanilla with vanilla, red velvet with cream cheese, 
and then carrot cake with cream cheese. Is that right? I think that was right. Anyway, I tasted all of them. They were all amazing. Literally, desserts, food, everything, 10 out of 10. Um, what else? I mean, that's mainly it. And then we did, like, the toast and stuff like that, and that was all great, because that was all, like, run by my, my family and stuff. Um, I am thankful we got the opportunity to be with my family and Kyle's family, and we got to go on vacation together. That was something that I will remember forever. We made so many memories, and we had an awesome time. Um, I am thankful I got the opportunity to get married at Disney. That is something that definitely not a lot of people can you know, get the chance to do. So, if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I hope this didn't come off as me, like, complaining really about the wedding. I just wanted it to be very straightforward and let you know some of the things that we had to go through with the wedding, um, just the whole process in general. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it answered some questions. I hope if you're getting married at Disney, I did not make you more nervous. Maybe just, like, triple check. Just, you know, triple check. Never be afraid to ask things. But have a magical day. I will see you guys in another video. The next video I post after this will probably be the wedding video. And then um, if you go over to my personal page, which is Steffi and Nicole, um, that I'll be posting vlogs from our honeymoon that Kyle and I just went on. We went to Disney's Alani, so you'll get to see that. Um, so definitely subscribe to us and subscribe to my main channel. And yeah, that's it. Have a good day.